is the Daily Practice Podcast with Crystal Borelli and Andrea Hellman. Harium, harium, harium. The thing about life. <laughs> You're going to talk about boundaries, self care, which is grounding mm-hmm. and regulating. All right, let's hit it. Let's hit it up. You're, the, you're here to teach us, so why don't you... Well, there's different ways to look at boundaries. I think boundaries are very important professionally and energetically. Yeah, because it's interesting when people talk about boundaries and they also talk about like energy leaks. And... Oh, yeah. That's mm-hmm. kind of my my <laughs> where I come from, the energetic boundary. So I'm sure you, like many people can have um, have had experiences where they're with certain people and they feel drained leaving mm-hmm. the friendship or that connection or interaction. And those, those are kind of the, and you're not even always conscious. Mm-hmm. A lot of this is subconscious kind of interactions, um, that energy suckers. So that's where it's really important to create your own boundaries. That could be as simple as, um, putting up your own energy shield, right? Um, you don't, that, that's like a deeper practice, I think, of like learning how to do that. It can be a little bit more challenging, but maybe interactions with those people that you feel drained after hanging out with them, that they're shorter visits. Mm. That's like a simple, just mm-hmm. like, hey, I've got half an hour for you to hang out. And you kind of like navigate it that way. That's as simple as it could be. Or if, if you are, as you learn how to create your energetic boundaries, then you can put up your energy shield just to block a little bit of that, that suction that can happen. Um, and then on a professional level, you know, um, boundaries are so important because your time is precious, you know, and they say like time is money. Sure. Non-renewable resource. Yeah. yeah. Unless we get into the quantum, but that's yeah. another, I'll put that down <laughs> for the podcast. Right. Um, so again, setting professional boundaries around time, you know, a lot, like in my line of work, a lot of people will ask for time to have coffee and I'm like, okay, instead of being like, yeah, let's meet. And there's no time frame, then people can definitely take a lot more time than you what, are allowing. What are you talking about though? Like people that you work with professionally? Yeah, like students. Can okay. Be like, oh, can I go, can we go for coffee? I've got some questions around mm. this and this and this. And that's the time you'd be like, yeah, I have like 20 minutes that I can offer you. I think this is the moment when I say, before coming here today, Crystal said, I have two hours. <laughs> I did say that. And yeah. then I was late. So I kind of feel like That's my integrity was was botched at that time. Yeah. But I have this whole thing about found time where when people are late, I use that time and it feels like exponential. Like it, you know, I can get so much more done because I don't know, procrastinating, whatever. Just like, yeah, I, I love, I thing. love found time. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, it's funny because I had a feeling that because even when I said, hey, would 1.30 work better? Like we kind of agreed on that. And I felt like you're like, yeah, I kind of haven't prepared. And I was like, okay, she, a little extra time is good. And even I find um, with my own time management, I mean, this is different. This is time management. But I find that I want to please and be there earlier than I can actually physically be there. Mm-hmm. And I need to learn to give my be more realistic with my timing or give myself a bit more grace period in that and start to communicate that a little bit more. Mm. I think it's a that is a perception thing though because I take care of my little sister. She lives with me. I'm her caretaker. She has Down syndrome. And she needs to know what time for everything. So I always overestimate Usually if I think I'm going to be home in an hour, I'll tell her three hours. And usually I'm two and a half hours when you have um, like a measurement, a tool for measurement, Mm -hmm. which she is because she holds me accountable if I'm late. Yeah. Yeah. But it's really funny without those boundaries or kind of um, like looking at it, then you don't even really know where you're like spilling out or where you're losing time or Mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you're like, what? I didn't even accomplish anything. And really, what is time? Well, that's the whole like quantum <laughs> thing. 
<laughs> yeah. yeah. It's funny. Yeah. Uh, no, we, we work off time with everything. I mean, we, how our whole world and structure is that. That's what's so nice about being on vacation because you can let go of there's this, mm-hmm. you have to be somewhere at some time. So you kind of organize your whole day around certain meetings and work and, you know, class times that need to start, like that you're going to or you are teaching in my, pers- in my you know, yeah. line of work. And, yeah. And it's so nice to be free of that mm-hmm. to have, but then what happens is you said, like, I'm like, Oh my God, where did the day go? Like Michael get home and it'd be like, what'd you do today? And I'm like, Oh, um, <laughs> yeah, nothing. <laughs> I feel like but, I was busy all day, but I don't even know what to yeah, show for it. <laughs> definitely. I constantly feel like I am, you know, two miles behind everything. Like I've, have you heard the thing where if you have more than three priorities, you don't have any at all? Like that, that is me, right? And I've got like 10 different things like going on. And, and then because of that, I'm spread so thin. And then I never really feel like I am accomplishing things or checking it off. And then I try to like have compassion for myself and, yeah. you know. Do you write lists? I write lists and then I cross them off as I get stuff done. I think, well, I have lists, but there's literally 30 things on that list. So I think I need to... Or one thing I, I've been trying to do, and the, uh, I can't even remember who the man was, is like this business guy. And he created this whole journal, and it's about having like three objectives a day, like to focus. And so you write down what those three things are for that day so you can actually check it off. Because better to, you know what I mean, to do three things than to do one third of 10 things or what, right. whatever it is, you know? Yeah, maybe there should be a limit on the list. Mm-hmm. Like I have three lists going, one because I'm packing for Laskiti, one because I'm packing for Bali, and one of like how household things that I need to get done before I go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's so satisfying to cross that shit off. Yeah. I have a friend that um, is really into lists, mm-hmm. and then she confessed to me that sometimes when she's checking off her list, if she does something, she'll like write it on the list and then check it off. Nice. Oh, just to... they say that's actually something you should do. Oh, okay. So you should, yeah, like I, can't, I think it was with Lululemon, but once you start your goals, you should put a goal that you just accomplished or already the most recent accomplishment, oh. put it on there and then cross it off because there is something in your brain. I have no idea what it is. Um, write in and let us know. Yeah. <laughs> they, that um, fires that as like an accomplishment. So you feel like a little bit of like proud or like it's an achievement. Hit. It's an achievement, right? So you're yeah. like, oh, I can do this. So it's a little bit of a drive. Yeah, I like that. But I do, I will confess that I have lists that like three things keep transferring to my new list mm-hmm. because the, everything else gets like really messy and like crossed off. But these three keep on getting transferred to my new list. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the procrastination. Other, the other thing that I've heard is when you have like a really big thing, it's almost good to write out like the steps for it so that you actually break it apart so that it's actually easier to accomplish and to do. Yeah, that's like a goal setting. Um, mm-hmm. Like when you hit do goal setting, you start with like the 10 year plan, you start backwards. Mm-hmm. So it's like, okay, if I want to get here, what do I have to do? accomplish there well this is like and you kind of work backwards and then you're like okay you break it down small and smaller it's like okay the first step is small and achievable and then it gets that the brain thing again which again I don't know what that is but endorphins maybe Mm -hmm. keep on working back up okay boom Boom. back on topic uh self-care boundaries oh man it's interesting because we talked about boundaries and then you said self-care. Like, why do you think self-care is an important part of talking about boundaries? Well, it's your energy, mm-hmm. right? So if you're giving your energy out um, freely or just like flowing out, what is your, you need to replenish, you need to restore back that energy. So what lights you up? What makes you feel good? What is really important to you? What's your passion? So it could be, Work is one thing, of course, you got to pay the bills and do all the things, but what outside of that, that fills you up, that gives you joy Mm -hmm. and the joy is what's going to bring and fill your energy reservoir, I find. Uh, Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that could be food, making sure, I mean, the basics like food, water, sleep. Yes. Dirt biking. Dirt biking. (laughs) But even that, like I, that's like my endorphins. Like I get so Mm -hmm. happy dirt biking. It's so much fun. I love it. But but you can't do it every day. No, it's exhausting. Like mm-hmm. it, I get so tired. My body is like so fatigued because I'm throwing around this hundred, you know, hundred fifty cc bike that's like over two hundred pounds, and I'm lifting it up and throwing it around and wheeling and doing all these crazy strong core, strong core. I can feel it. My mm-hmm. body is f- 
tired. Mm -hmm. So it's like rest day. Okay. Those Mm -hmm. are the days that it's, you know, you have a chill day. You do a computer day. You take Mm -hmm. care of yourself. You eat really nurturing, uh, nourishing food. Uh, Maybe it's like a walk in the woods. I do walk in the woods every day because of Leo, but. Mm -hmm. Leo being your dog. Oh yes. Leo, the lion, Mm -hmm. the boxer. (laughs) Uh, what is interesting too, when you were saying about like just energy sort of like moving around, I'd seen this, uh, what do you call them? Like pitographs or like little cartoon things. Okay. And when it was, uh, the one part, it was just like somebody just like pouring water out. Mm. And, um, maybe that one said thinking or something. And then the next thing beside it, it had like a vessel and it was like pouring like the liquid in. And then it said, uh, like writing, you know, cause like writing is, taking all your thoughts and like putting it into something. So it kind of like lives in something when we're talking about energy drains and, and things of like your energy going out into like all these different places. Yeah. But then like having something to like, sort of like bring it back together, like a vessel or a container or something to keep you, um, together. Pranayama. Okay. Let's hear it. What's a good pranayama for this? Well, pranayama. So prana meet life force, life energy, uh, ayama, it means extension, expansion, and pause. And the life force, of course, is all around you. Like I remember visiting um, in India, um, Swami, one of the Swami Yoganandas, not the, this is like another one. <laughs> There's a couple, but he, um, he, I got, I asked him what he ate or ate as food as a yogi at his age. Cause he's like 103. The first time I saw him when I asked him and he said, prana, I eat prana. Nice. I was like, Ooh, energy. He's energy. And the time I was for breakfast, lunch and dinner, a little bit of kitchery, a little bit of chai. And I was like, <laughs> wow, like what does that mean? And even my teacher Vishvaji will be like, breathe into your toes, breathe into your fingers. And I remember being like, dude, what the fuck does that mean? Like, how can I breathe into my toes and my fingers? And now I get it because it's all moving of energy. It's moving a prana, a prana. So by doing breath work, you're, you're activating this energy in your body, right? You're stimulating the movement and filling your reservoir back up, which can get depleted as you get older, of course. I think about it kind of like the adrenals, you know, like this, or the, oh, just this like reservoir for later on. So you want to keep that full and vibrant, bringing lots of oxygen into your system. And, um, pranayama is one way to build up your reservoir. Can you give us, uh, a quick pranayama that can help us ground down, conserve our energy, grounding, focus us. Yep. Grounding and focus, what you just said, is definitely the Brahmari. Okay. So the honeybee breath, the bumblebee breath. So by creating a vibration um, with the sound in your body, it's said that it stimulates the pineal gland um, that will secrete melatonin, which helps in a meditative state. And when you do on a little bit of a lower tone, it is very grounding. So personally, the Brahmari is one of the breaths, other than some there's some other ones of course but the brahmari is probably the most meditative that is a tool to drop into meditation that's how i feel for it so why don't we try sit up tall close your eyes and start with some nice full belly breath so just fill the belly up up to the upper lungs and then softening through the upper lungs down and towards your belly now we're taking the big breath, so it's this exaggeration of the belly breathing first. So we're getting the richest oxygen that lives in the base of the lungs. Of course, eventually you can breathe um, just above the navel there so the belly doesn't have to expand, but it's nice to practice this fullness first as you master the practice of the yogic breath. Now I'll have you bring your tongue to the roof of your mouth. And your inner gaze goes to the third eye with the focus of feeling the vibration around your nasal area and your third eye. We're going to make the sound of the honeybee for the whole exhale breath. So a deeper tone, take an inhale. Mm
tongue to fall away from the roof of your mouth. Hold your gaze, the third eye. magic Mm -hmm. so this breath oh man i feel like i could just drift off in meditation but this breath is great to do if you have a hard time sleeping um it relaxes the nervous system it also is said to reprogram on a cellular cellular level uh trauma so re it's like a um, reboot of the system so to say. So it's very nurturing. You can feel the grounding effects of it. When you do a higher sound, it can be a lot um, like a higher vibration, which lifts you. So if you're looking to ground or to get centered, a little bit of a lower tone. Mm -hmm. And I would do about anywhere between, we just did three because the three is the divine number. Well, 108 is a divine number, but 108 is a lot for the throat. But you could do mm-hmm. um, three till eight to eight, or just keep going until you feel that you don't need it anymore. So it's a tool to drop into the meditation. And once you feel you've kind of lingered, you linger there. And if you feel the mind coming back, then perhaps you do a couple more and use it as this tool to keep dropping back in. Mm-hmm. I love that. So this podcast episode is focused on boundaries and self-care and I was thinking it might be a good idea for people to sort of map out their day and kind of look at what is actually draining like in their lives and doing a little self-reflection and like you brought up before it could be like friends it could be like different tasks that you're doing so it might be you know but by putting the things that are like taking energy away and not necessarily labeling them as good or bad, but maybe looking at different boundaries you can put around them so that they aren't draining. Mm -hmm. And then it would be nice as well to look at what really lifts you and and Mm -hmm. to fill you back up. Like, you know, on your list, if you do write it out, like what your day looks like and like, okay, well, these things are the really energetic draining ones, then identify which ones are the ones that really fuel you and give you life and happiness. And, mm-hmm. and then just, just to like have an idea, right. And which ones you want to nurture. Definitely. Yeah. And, uh, do a little bromari before you write your list out. Another interesting thing to sort of like apply it. So we're kind of going through all of these teachings and things and like bringing them all forward and like shifting perspective because maybe someone or something you find kind of draining, but then kind of looking at the bigger picture, like why is this draining? Is it draining because I'm at work trying to discuss something personal or, you know what I mean? Like looking at like the whole situation to see what is actually making it draining and whether you're contributing to the drain or not and having better boundaries about that. So things don't just like spill out into like all the different hats that we wear. Yeah. And I think that speaks also to the shifting your perspective, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. seeing people perhaps as you, in, in a relationship situation, like seeing them as another teacher, as we all are teachers in those moments, especially as friendships and whatnot. So like w- your perspective on them or your experience of that person and can you shift that? Because sometimes when you shift your perspective, the energy, not sometimes, all the time, when you shift your perspective, the energy will shift around it as well. Mm -hmm. And that's where like the healing, again, as I mentioned, can happen. Definitely. It's interesting too, because in my line of work, like people will say, I hate social media, blah, 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 all these things. And it's Mm -hmm. like, well, like, do you hate social media or do you hate the fact that you are scrolling for 90 minutes? Like if you set your alarm or your timer for 15 minutes, maybe you don't hate it as much Mm -hmm. or like, what are like, when you're doing that, what aren't you looking at? And like, are you procrastinating? Like, what is the full cycle of everything and not being so, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's a great tool for many different Mm -hmm. in many different ways to connect for business for so yeah if it's you don't like it because you're on there too much then limit yeah the time that you're on there and then you can see it as uh yeah and being mindful I guess is 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 that yeah 
but that's also why it's like so good too. Sometimes you can just get pulled into a wormhole. All of a sudden you're watching a lot of dance videos. <laughs> <laughs> or it's like also different accounts. Like sometimes certain accounts are really triggering. And if it's triggering or like the person, you know, you don't like what they're putting, like unfollow them or mute them or like, you know, like create some personal boundaries around those things to shift your experience. And notice how you feel when you're doing it as well. Sometimes if I'm on my computer in general or phone too mm. much, I feel start to feel really nauseous. Mm. I think you know this about me. So I take a break. I'm like, okay, I'm going mm-hmm. into the woods now. I'm going to go get reconnected to the ground, back yeah. to the grounding, you know, sit by the water, um, be in nature, get present with around me rather than this life that is happening outside of me, which half the time the life that people are portraying on social media isn't actually their life at all. Well, it's 1% of their life. Maybe. <laughs> um, or my, a perspective of a life that they would like. Yeah. Even. My homeopath says that you need a break every like 15 to 20 minutes of computer work. Um, and then this other thing that I was reading about, this thing called like optic flow. So like when you're like moving through the world and then um, things around you are sort of shifting in relation to you. So if you're like walking and like the houses are getting closer or, or further away and like to, to practice that when you're walking, you should try to like look up to the tops of the trees, like look down at the ground, look to the side, like, you know, moving your eyes. And when you're on a screen, um, you're not moving your eyes, which I think affects you. I don't really know all the scientific reasons for why that's, but I guess it's just kind of going against like the way we were designed to be moving through the forest and like hunting and gathering Mm -hmm. all those things. And then when you're not actually doing that, or like the screen is doing all that for you, it's just like a false sense of it. I don't know. Very interesting. Very should, interesting. We should get somebody on here that actually knows what they're talking about to, uh, <laughs> I'll write that down. No, I like our, um, make believe guest, guesstimation. Is that yeah. a word? Guesstimation. Uh, We're going to make up words too. Well, <laughs> I guess like one word would be a hypothesis, but in this, it's not an educated guess. It's just sort of a, uh, a guess. It's a guess or it's an, it's the way I'm experiencing the world. An so opinion. It's my, my perspective. Yeah. It's something. I like it. I like your perspective. All right. So daily practice. I feel like every time we talk about it, it it makes like a little bit more sense. And so the daily practice is all of these ways that we can connect to ourselves and our body and like bring the connection to mind, body, soul all together. I'd say the daily practice is the living embodiment of the teachings in a modern world. Mic drop. We'll see you next week. Om Hari Om. Hari Om, Hari Om. This is the Daily Practice Om, Podcast with Crystal Borelli and Andrew Hellman. If you want to check us out on the World Wide Web, our website is thedailypractice.life. And on there, we have all kinds of resources, but we have a free full moon course. It's about an hour long. There's a yoga practice, pranayama. You'll learn a mantra as well as story time and all taught by Crystal Borelli. Hari Om.